European Commission sees Poland's O9 GDP as the highest in the region and points out several risks. Will private segment of Poland's retirement system be used to help plug growing hole in the state budget? Bidding for larger margins. The Polish Central Bank plans to start auctioning their coin collections online. Welcome back to Business Poland, I'm Roman Młotkowski. This time we meet on the trading floor of Warsaw Stock Exchange, where the biggest European IPO this year just took place. PGE, Polska Grupa Energetyczna, is energy producer and distributor. We'll tell you more about the company and outlook for the stocks later in our show. Meanwhile, we'll start with latest forecast for Poland, straight from EU's Hakin Almunia. 2 p.m., the Warsaw city center. It might not look like the fastest capital in the EU, but it may very well be, as the Polish economy is still growing, despite the shrinking economies of its neighbors. There are several elements that uh, have helped uh, Poland to uh, register this positive growth uh, this year. The depreciation of the slotty, the degree of openness of uh, the Polish economy is lower than in other cases, and Poland has a strong internal market, a national internal market, with uh, close to 40 million uh, people. Poland managed to use the time when its currency was weak to its advantage. The demand for Polish products grew, especially among customers in the Western countries. According to the latest European Commission report, Polish GDP growth will be plus 1.2% in 2009. That would make it the best result among the 27 EU countries and the only positive growth in the entire Union. EU countries as a whole will show negative GDP results of around minus 4.1%. This is an optimistic report. It shows the situation is better now than we could have predicted just a half year ago. However, sustainable recovery in the future quarters shouldn't be taken for granted. The Commission's report claims that the EU is slowly emerging from the recession. In 2010, Polish GDP is forecast to be at almost 2 percent, the second best result in the EU after Slovakia. In 2010, only eight countries will have a shrinking GDP. In 2011, EU countries will grow with an average rate of 1.6 percent. Poland will stand out with 3.2 percent growth predicted to be beaten only by Estonia. I've said it many times, and I believe it, that GDP will be more than 2 percent. But we'd all really be happy if the Bank of America's 3.5 percent forecast turns out to be true. The reason for the positive outlook? The USA's report that the third quarter GDP results were better than expected at 3.5 percent, although many economists are pointing out that this may only be temporary improvement. I'd love to be wrong here, but I think it's possible that slow growth will return or a quarter-to-quarter -quarter decline will occur, accompanied by additional fiscal burden. But it's the situation in global economies that's thought to be the biggest risk to the Polish economy. Poland's economy is dependent on the German economy, and their economy is linked to the U.S., and that's why the global effect is very important to Poland. Add to that mix the Zwalte exchange rate. If the Zwalte strengthens, exporters in Poland earn less, and that's why the cautiously optimistic forecast for Poland in the next few months may be the most accurate. Whichever forecast for Polish economy you might take, you will always run into discussion about public finances and the debt. Desperate to fight the growing debt, Minister of Finance Jacek Rostowski is now trying to reach to money from private pension funds to help fund ailing old pension system. What's the difference between old and new and what are the chances that Minister of Finance will be successful? This week, a hot debate was sparked by the Finance and Labor Ministry's idea to change Poland's retirement system, important as it touches almost all workers and companies in Poland. The debate centers on two parts of Poland's three-tier retirement system, which was established back in 1999, the first of which deducts payments from nearly every worker's paycheck in Poland and goes to the social insurance fund called FUS. The other part goes to their individual accounts in the Open Retirement Fund, called OFE. The third is an optional private plan offered by employers. 
The current battle, however, is over the percent that goes to FUS and OFE. Currently, around 7% of the monthly salary goes to private investment funds picked by the individual. These private funds then manage the money investing in stocks and bonds, while FUS, the state social security insurance fund, gets around 12% of the monthly wage and is kept in so-called ultra-safe investments. If the finance and labor ministers have their way, the OFE investment contributions would simply decrease to 3%, and the social insurance payments would increase to 16 percent. Government officials support the plan, saying it's in the public's interest, and even bragging that it will be better. This plan will benefit those who retire in the future. The future retirement pension will increase in the long term. In fact, they'll increase substantially every year. However, the idea of the government putting less of their earnings into their individual retirement accounts has both experts and citizens alarmed. I'm speaking out not only as a retirement fund manager, but also as a future retiree. I'm horrified. We want to see a concrete draft with concrete solutions as well as full calculations that will prove that taking money from the OFE into the social security system is beneficial for the citizens. Now I know I have my retirement account and some money is deposited there. With the new solution, I'm scared I don't know what's happening to my money. But by funneling the OFE contributions into the Social Security Fund, the government could save an estimated 13 billion złoty that would otherwise have to be paid by the central budget. It comes as the government is dangerously approaching the legal limit of 55 percent of public debt to GDP and looking for ways around the problem. But that would put the government on a road to abolish the pension reform of 1999 and take Poland back to the old European system where money collected from future retirees are directly paid out to current ones. The project prepared by Minister of Finance and Minister of Labor sparked outrage among Polish economists. Here's what former central banker Professor Krzysztof Rybinski had to say. Poland is still a relatively poor country, and for poor country, 60% public debt will be a burden. And then there's a question what to do not to bridge 60% limit. Should we do reforms, which is the positive thing, or, as it is done today, creative accounting, which seems to be done by the government. Yeah, let's talk about creative accounting. Very hot potato in the last couple of days in Poland. This proposal to raid the private sector uh, uh, pension contributions and put it into a public pot. Uh, you and a lot of other economists are up in arms about this. Yes, we are preparing an open letter to Prime Minister to stop doing what they're doing, stop depriving individuals in Poland from the private savings in the private pension system. Poland was praised for years for having one of the best pension systems compared to Chile or other countries that reformed the pension systems. And now government is spoiling this achievement in order to artificially reduce fiscal deficit in 2010. But sir, if this private sector pension pot is raided, surely that has ramifications for the stock market, for investment in government bonds as well? Exactly. If they do it, perception of Poland would fall Investors would not like Poland as much as they do right now. Uh, pension funds will not invest as much in stock exchange. Uh, I think it's a wrong idea and we should not uh, destabilize the situation in order just to artificially reduce fiscal deficit. Reforms are needed. And as we said in the beginning of our program, the reason why we're meeting here on Warsaw Stock Exchange is the largest IPO in Europe this year. PGE, Polska Grupa Energetyczna. Bożej Karbowski is watching the event. A lot of interest from international media about uh, the IPO. We talked to the former president of Warsaw Stock Exchange, Wiesław Rozwucki, and uh, he said that this is just the beginning. We're going to see a lot of IPOs like that in 2010. So uh, a big lineup of IPOs uh, in the next uh, months coming here in Warsaw. Let's hear what he has to say. I hope that the free float of PGE will be increased. Uh, it's hard to say when. But there are other companies, uh, another uh, electricity company, Tauron, is in the pipeline. Uh, but uh, the market also waits uh, for PZU, the biggest insurance uh, in Poland, one of the biggest insurers uh, in Europe. And the date of uh, debut on the Warsaw Stock Exchange is scheduled next year as well. When you're talking to uh, international investors or your business uh, partners somewhere abroad, do they have the knowledge that 
such companies like the largest insurer, the largest energy producer are still on sale here in Poland? I believe that among specialists uh, in uh, Central Europe or Poland, this is a common knowledge. Uh, so it's not a discovery, but I think uh, there is a task ahead of us of uh, breaking this news to a wider audience. That was Wiesław Rozwódzki, the former CEO of the Warsaw Stock Exchange, talking to us earlier. Now for the market update with indices fairly flat, the highlight of the week was the first day of trade of PGE. As expected, the stock surged. It gained 13%, making it the largest Polish company on the Warsaw Stock Exchange. The company, which produces 42% of Polish energy, is set to join the Blue Chip Week 20 index very soon. The index itself gained just 0.09% on the week. Some of the financials weighed on the market with disappointing Q3 results. That's it from the Warsaw Stock Exchange. I'm Błażej Karwowski. That was Błażej Karwowski. Thanks, Błażej. And now, finally, this is one Zloty coin. By the way, that's uh, something that you see flipping through the screen in between other stories. If it was made of gold, probably private collectors would crowd in front of National Bank of Poland. The Central Bank wants now to use internet auctions to sell those things instead of seeing people crowding in front of their offices. Is that a good idea? Well, as usually, discussion goes on. Waiting in line at Poland Central Bank NBP will be a thing of the past for coin collectors as NBP has launched a new online way of buying new issues of coins. Normally we issue a coin in a series of 100,000 and that's a lot. So we said enough, we don't want to further increase the supply to meet demand. We want to implement market rules and establish prices to distribute coins. The NBP wants to lower market prices by holding auctions where the bid price becomes the price at which the bank will sell the coins to individual collectors. But coin dealers feel cut off because previously they were able to buy coins at a discount from the bank and then sell them to customers. Afterwards, they may find that difficult. If I have to buy all the coin collections at auction, there's a chance I might not be able to get all of them, and that would be worthless for me, as customers want complete sets. But for the NBP, it's simple business. Selling coins at internet auctions allows the bank to get the best prices and skip the middleman. Companies were buying up most of the coins, then selling them via internet auctions. Some of them were sold a year after the coins were minted and at a nice profit. Sometimes by several hundred percent. For example, initially this coin was sold by the bank for around 20 euro, but later on its prices surged to 125 euro on the open market. But some coin collectors in Poland are elderly people who don't use the internet at all. So NBP assures those collectors they'll be able to use the paper forms to bid for those sought after coins in Poland. And that's all in Business Poland this week. I hope you've enjoyed our show and you'll join us next time to see what's hot and what's not in Polish economy. Meanwhile, stay tuned to CNBC.